This is me playing Celeste. It is really bad. I struggled a lot. But as I was playing this game, I started to think more and more, what would it look like if I actually built a robot to beat this for me? So that's exactly what I did. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now, as I was playing through this game, I was really, really struggling, especially with the harder levels in the game. And it made me really start to think, why don't I just build out a robot to do this? Especially because I know that there are robots out there that do beat video games. I've seen videos such as this, where you see some crazy things happening where a robot is playing the game and is doing completely inhuman things and just absolutely dominating. I wanted to kind of take that skill and build out a much simpler robot, just one that could beat difficult levels for me if I wanted, or just one that could beat levels in general. It sounded like a really fun project for me to do, and since it's important to make sure that you're having fun while programming, I figured it would be a great thing to just meld some of my passions together and build out this really simple project. So in this video, I kind of want to walk you through the process of how I started thinking about building out this project and how I actually went about building it and the roadblocks I ran into on the way. So when you start thinking of your own projects, you kind of have a roadmap of what the best things to do are. So obviously the very first thing I did was think of the idea of building out this project. And the main reason why I thought this was a really good and feasible project was because in the game, there's only a very subset few things that you can do. You can move in eight different directions. You can jump, you can dash, and you can climb up a wall. That's really only like 10 different things that you can do in the game. So it's very easy to program a computer to do this because it only has like 10 different inputs that it can enter. And all you need to do is just control when those inputs happen and how long they happen for. I figured that would be a perfect task for building out an AI to beat it. And that's because it's a lot simpler game than something like a first person shooter where there's so many different complex things you do. You have joystick movements and all that. And it's so much more difficult than something that only has 10 different inputs. So I figured, okay, this could be a feasible project for someone like me that has zero experience building out a robot or an algorithm to beat a game. So once I had this idea and kind of thought through why it would be feasible, my next step was to do a bunch of research. And this was a difficult step. I spent a lot of time trying to find are there libraries that allowed me to interact with and enter inputs into a game? Are there things that already exist that could make this easier for me? And so on. And I ran it into essentially two different things. Number one is a tool that's built already that allows you to build out these robots for the exact game Celeste. It was essentially a tool that allowed me to just enter in very simple commands and it would allow me to build out a robot that would do exactly what I wanted it to. It had tons of handy features in it and really it was just absolutely amazing. It was like the Cadillac experience. It had everything built into it. And the second option that I found was a really simple library for Node.js that just allowed me to automatically enter keyboard inputs and that was pretty much all that it did. It didn't do any interactions with the game. I had to do all that manually myself, but it just allowed me to do keyboard inputs and that was it. And I actually ended up going with option number two. And you may think, why would I do that? Because option one is better in literally every single way. But for me, this was a project I wanted to actually learn from. I wanted to build out something on my own from scratch to kind of see how it worked. I wanted to see what the process was for building out one of these robots. I didn't care very much about the end result. I really only cared about what the process was to get there. So I ended up going with option number two, building it out completely from scratch with this library that allowed me to interact with the keyboard and enter keyboard commands programmatically. And the only reason for that was because my goal for this project was to learn how these things are built and not necessarily actually build one out myself. So when you're building out your next project, think about what your goals are. If your goal is to learn something, maybe don't use the tool that covers absolutely everything and does it all for you and choose something a little bit more bare bones. But if your goal is just to get an end product out, definitely go with the tool that does everything for you. So now once I chose my library, the next step for me was to essentially get a hello world version working. I just wanted to get a really simple working version where I could actually enter some code and would write out some keyboard commands and interact with the game itself. So essentially what I did was I created some helper functions for this library that allowed me to do very simple things. Like I said, there's really only 10 different commands in this game. So I essentially created 10 different functions that run the keyboard inputs for those 10 different commands and then I could just really easily write out a script that called those commands in the correct order for the correct amount of time, and boom, I had a script that could beat levels for me. So my first step was to kind of get just the very first few functions working. I wanted to be able to make my character move to the right, move to the left, and so on. So I essentially created just those helper functions, move to the right, move to the left, and I just tested them out. And I just went with those functions and it worked pretty well. And I ended up beating the very first like screen of the game. Super simple, you mostly just move to the right and jump. There's really nothing else that you need to do. So I just made the right function and the jump function and boom, there I was. 
so I was able to actually beat that first level, which to me was like the hello world of this program. Now once I built out that hello world, there's kind of two steps that you can do. You can continue building upon your project and making it bigger and better, or you can kind of think about the structure that you've already built and determine is this good enough? Because my MVP was pretty good, but the code I wrote was a little bit messy. I realized that in order to do more complex levels, the code was going to get really confusing, difficult to follow, and hard to debug and fix. So I ended up going back and rewriting a lot of the functions and code that I had in order to make it easier to work with and so that every single time I got into rating a new level, it was easier and easier to do so that way I could create level and code faster and faster and faster, which means I could write the robot and make it complete levels even faster. So this time that I spent rewriting the code may seem wasted, but it actually saved me a bunch of time in actually writing out the code to complete further levels. And after doing that, I essentially got the robot to beat the entire first part of the game. Again, it's very simple. It's mostly just jumping, moving left, right, up, down, and so on. But I got it to beat that completely, which was a huge milestone in my opinion. Once I got this done, I essentially figured that I had a really good MVP that could build out the entire first level of the game complete on its own with no interaction from myself. So I decided what I was going to do is move to some of the later levels in the game that are much more difficult and much harder and see if the code that I wrote could actually beat these levels. And immediately I started running into tons of problems. At the later portions of the game, you need to do your inputs very quickly back to back. And I realized that the library I was using was just too slow to do this. There's about a 100 millisecond delay between when you actually called the code to press the key and when the key would actually get pressed. And that delay meant that the rest of the code would have to wait for the key to get pressed. So everything was waiting 100 milliseconds. So every time I pressed the key to go right, it would have to wait 100 milliseconds before the next input could be inputted. And at certain parts in the game, in the level I was trying to beat, you needed to be quicker than that 100 millisecond time. You needed to be essentially hitting multiple keys back to back almost simultaneously. And the code I wrote just couldn't handle that. And the library I was using was unfortunately just too slow for this. And it's probably because, you know, I'm building this in JavaScript, which is not the most optimal or performant language in the world. And it's something built into Node.js that's really not the most clean thing in the entire world. So overall, it was just something that wasn't going to work. And I ended up having to completely scratch the idea because the library I was using and the code I was using was just too limited to actually make these interactions. So this was a bit of a bummer because essentially the project I built was a failure. It couldn't beat these more difficult levels because it wasn't able to move at a quick enough speed. And it was just a fundamental flaw with the technology and languages and frameworks that I chose to build out this project. And at some point you may run into a similar issue where the language or project or framework you chose is either not optimal or impossible to build the thing that you want. And you're going to hit that spot and it's going to suck. For me, that's what happened. It really sucked. It was kind of disheartening. I was like, wow, I can't even do this. I kind of threw the project to the side and ignored it for a while. But I ended up coming back and I decided, you know what? I'm going to do the exact same thing, but with that first tool I mentioned, the one that has all the everything baked into it that makes it so much easier. It's built into the game essentially, so you don't have to worry about all this complex workaround code that I was doing. So I started building out the robot in that and it was so much easier because like I said, I had all these tools built in. And again, I was able to program that to beat quite a few screens in the game, but I got really bored because like I said, the purpose of this project was for me to learn how these different things are built. And it wasn't really to build a robot, but to learn how to build a robot. And by using this tool, I wasn't learning how to build a robot. I was just building a robot and that wasn't very fun to me. And I ended up just completely giving up after that and not actually building out or finishing this project, which may sound really disheartening and discouraging, but I learned a ton along the way. And my goal was to learn how to build these robots. And I learned a lot about how these robots are built by writing out the code that I did. So while on the surface, it may look like a complete failure. I just wasted a bunch of time building out something that was never going to work from the beginning. And I ended up having to scratch the entire thing. But to me, it was a success because my goal was to learn and I learned so much from doing it. So if you ever run into issues where you're building out a project and it fails, where you're building out a project and you quit, don't think that this project is a failure. Don't think that you're a failure. You've learned from this experience. You've probably learned tons from building this project. You've learned what will work. And most importantly, you've learned what won't work. So you can take those skills into the next project you build. So I know for myself, if I'm going to build out a robot that interacts and presses keyboard inputs, I'm going to need a tool or language that is much faster, much closer to the computer. That way it doesn't have these large hundred millisecond delays that I have to worry about. Also, something important to take away from this project is it's important to realize that as programmers, you have a lot of ability to be able to create custom things to do whatever you want. I mean, who else would think, oh, I'm going to build a robot to beat the game for me because I'm too bad at it. But as a programmer, that's one of the first things I thought of when I saw the game and how simple the inputs were. I was like, hey, a computer can do this and I can build a computer to do this. 
So just take whatever you're passionate about, whatever you're doing at this time, and try to build projects around it because you're going to have so much fun doing so. And if you're interested in how to make programming more fun, you definitely should check out this video I have linked over here. It talks about this entire concept in depth about how you can make programming more fun so you're much more likely to succeed. So I highly recommend you check out that video and also subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.